So for those who are just wondering kind of what our numbers have looked like, obviously, we just got started in October with this. Again, the reason we think that this is a worthwhile investment is because we think this is a cash flow machine. And we really think this could be a multi-million dollar business or Amazon seller account opportunity going into the future. Hey, welcome back to the Amazing Freedom Podcast. It is 2023, and we are definitely hitting the ground running in our own businesses. The last couple of weeks have been pretty crazy. Uh, we talked about in the last couple of episodes how we are planning for the new year with some new things we've never done before, like a budget and some quarterly plans and annual planning, which has been super helpful, but also has kept us really busy, as well as we've um, bought two new businesses just in the last three or four months. That's added a lot to our plate. Andy, I know you've been running around the last month or so, probably more than you had the entire previous year. Um, correct me if I'm wrong there, but I know it's just been a lot going on. So in this episode, we want to walk through some of the most important things that we've been getting out of our arbitrage side of Amazon in the new business that we are doing. And also in our private label brand that we continue to build, some relationships some manufacturing new things that we're looking at heading into this new year. We have all kinds of stuff going. Why don't you kick it off, Andy, with uh, how the new year is starting and what you have going on uh, in the business? Yeah, so we, we finished off uh, in December. Actually, I finished off doing a lot of shopping in stores. This is exactly how I got started selling on Amazon almost 10 years ago was going in stores, using a scanner, scanning the barcode and seeing if it was a product that was profitable that we could then resell on Amazon. So two weeks, uh, the, the last two weeks of December was in multiple stores doing that uh, along with my son and daughter who are helping out uh, building up the arbitrage business uh, that we purchased in October. So that was really exciting again getting my head wrapped back around to retail arbitrage and understanding the different criteria when it comes to buying. So when you use a scanner app, uh, which is just amazing technology, it'll scan that barcode and then it gives you a lot of different data that you're going to be able to make your decision on. So, you know, one of them is the ROI. So if I'm buying something for $20 and it's selling on Amazon for $60, it's going to give me what the ROI is on that product. And that's a data point that you need to make, right? You need to know what your margin is. Another a great data point that it brings up instantly is it's going to give you the BSR. And not only that, but on the app, uh, the scanner app, it'll actually give you the average BSR over the last year. So it'll bring up Keepa and you can see a good average because a lot of times when you're scanning, you'll get what I call false positives. For whatever reason, the price may have jumped up. Maybe uh, folks went out of stock and, uh, and you don't necessarily want to buy that product. So you always kind of want to see what the average BSR is. So it gives you all that data and a whole lot more, it shows you the number of offers on Amazon. And so then as you're scanning, right, and you're looking, hey, can I sell this potential, whatever it is, maybe it's a hat that you're looking at. And, uh, and you, you analyze that data, then based on that, you either put it back on the shelf or you put it in your cart. So, and, it, and we, we were able to hit some really good sales. So just in the last week of, uh, last two weeks of December, we spent over $20,000 in these stores, right? Scanning these various products, which then, you know, we immediately get back to the warehouse and send into the Amazon account. So that's exciting for me, kind of going back to the roots, the, the way that we got started on Amazon still works the same way 10 years later. And I, I wanted to just give some number updates uh, to the business. So we talked the last couple episodes about one of our biggest focal points with this new arbitrage business was getting the inventory turnover right. And we really focused on talking about repricing quite a bit. Well, I'm happy to say that we uh, Andy, you especially, you were in the repricer daily for a couple of weeks trying to get this right. And one of the challenges was when we bought the, into this account and got going was our inventory over 180 days, that aged inventory that you can see under the um, the inventory planning tool, which is important for any Amazon seller, no matter your business model, to be looking at this. Well, that was at a high number, a number we weren't comfortable with. And so through... Uh, aggressive repricing and making sure we were trying to move things quickly. We're now in the single digits for uh, for our total inventory that is over 
uh, 180 days or over six months old, right? So that's kind of a numbers update there. And then I think roughly we did uh, just shy of of 450 to 500,000 in Q4 with our arbitrage business. So for those who are just wondering kind of what our numbers have looked like, obviously we just got started in October with this and trying to, to get it rolling. But we, again, the reason we think that this is a worthwhile investment is because we think this is a cash flow machine uh, business that we've talked about before arbitrage can be. And we really think this could be a multi a multi-million dollar business or Amazon seller account opportunity going into the future. And so uh, overall, you know, a Q4 that we learned a lot and, and had some good numbers as a result. And like you said, Andy, we're really dialing in that buying criteria that I think is going to set us up well for next year. Any other numbers I'm missing that you would want to give a shout out to? No, I mean, I think that's the biggest one. Um, you know, we took it over in October and every month, month over month, it's growing by 15 or 20 percent. So you know, the goal, hopefully, with this Amazon account is going to be in the millions by the end of 2023. And I think we're on the right track. Awesome. So last year, we started off the podcast uh, in the beginning of 2022 with our $10 million challenge. We said we wanted to sell at least $10 million on Amazon. We had done that before, but never that much on Amazon in, in a single year. We had done that as a business in total. And we were able to achieve it. We announced a couple of weeks ago, we hit $10 million on Amazon. Well, this year, our um, we I don't think we're necessarily doing a challenge to ourselves like we did in the past, but we're aiming for based on our budget, just shy of 12 million. So if there was a challenge, it'd probably be the $12 million challenge, which is a 20% growth year over year, which isn't crazy, uh, but it also isn't going to be easy. Obviously, there's a lot going on from a macro economy level that we've talked about before uh, that will make this difficult. So uh, that that's mostly assuming that we can uh, continue to, to grow with our current products at a modest rate. And then we have a number of new products in the pipeline. And for this quarter, Q1 in our brand, we are looking to launch 10 new SKUs, 10 new products into our brand. We basically have those lined up, but just actually working with the manufacturing, getting them launched is always a challenge. So 10 will definitely stretch us in a good way, uh, but I think it's very doable. And so on that note, we're working, trying to get new products all the time. Like we talked about, we're always sourcing on arbitrage. We're always going out and sourcing. And for our brands, we're always looking for new opportunities. So we're sourcing in that way. Uh, and Andy, you were able to meet today with a potential manufacturer that we've actually been... Uh, sourcing manufacturers for oh, about two months, I would say now, right? That we've been working on this product. Uh, and today you actually had uh, a Chinese factories representative uh, come and meet you at the warehouse. And this is, uh, to me, super cool and interesting because I haven't heard of many uh, sellers who actually meet with their representatives stateside very often. So I'm definitely interested to hear uh, how this came about and walk through you know, what sellers might get out of, of these relationships trying to build this trust with the supplier. Yeah. So this is a, um, basically an email relationship that we've been uh, in WeChat, right? Going back and forth with a supplier in China, working on a new potential product. We've never worked with a supplier before. And so the biggest question always in suppliers' minds in China is, hey, the person on the other end of this email, are they a legit company? Are, are they a solopreneur working you know, out of the basement of their mom's house? Do they have like legitimate resources? Are we willing to invest, you know, our time uh, and energy in trying to, you know, produce a product for for this person? Those are always the questions, right? The manufacturer has because they probably get uh, hundreds and thousands of inquiries uh, on a monthly basis, and so for them being able to vet a potential buyer is very very profitable because. Them coming into our warehouse uh, today, which again, this is the first time a supplier has done this, they're able to see our operation. So we have a 30,000 square foot warehouse. We had six or seven employees there uh, you know, that were buzzing around. They're able to see all of our inventory uh, for our private label business. And, and so it legitimizes that we're a 11 million plus e-commerce seller. And then they say, okay, hey, look, I'm willing, you know, to budge on the price. I see that this is a legit company. They're really good at selling on Amazon. From the manufacturer's point of view, they want a long-term relationship. They want to work with a company who's really good at what they do. 
manufacturers, for the most part, they just want to manufacture a product. They don't want to have to deal with marketing. They don't want to have to deal with customer service. They want to make great products. So they want to partner with somebody who is good at marketing, who is good at dealing with customer service and direct to consumer. And so for her coming there and we spent about an hour with her, I have really high hopes that it's going to lead to a reduced price. So my conversation with her was, you know, for us, the challenge when we bring a new product to the Amazon marketplace, the hardest, the biggest question is, number one, is there going to be customer demand? And then number two, you know, is this product going to be profitable? Because after you spend Amazon ads and you add up all the other expenses that go into launching a product, it can be very challenging. I said, for us, the manufacturers that we really work well with are ones who understand on that initial launch, if they're able to bring their price, the cost of goods down to the bare minimum, then we have a really good opportunity about building a product and building a brand. So a lot of times uh, manufacturers, they think the exact opposite. On the first order, they want to increase the price. Because in their head, they don't know if they're going to get another order, right? Again, if they've never vetted the buyer, they don't know if the buyer's legitimate. And so they don't want to reduce the price. They want to make margin of money on that first order because they don't know if a second order is coming through. But by hopefully her realizing and seeing that we're a legit com- company, we're really good at what we do, she can then go back to her bosses and say, hey, look, these guys are good. Let's give them an opportunity. Let's give them our lowest price that we possibly can on this first order with hopes that in the future, we're going to continue to get more orders as well as more orders on other products. Yeah. So really cool. Uh, I have a quite. I don't know the answer to this, but if I am someone listening to this and I don't have necessarily the experience or backing or the warehouse to kind of do something like this in the past, this is why I know you, Andy, were so vocal about uh, the opportunities of going and visiting China because that was the that was the time to kind of build this relationship, right? When you did this for our brand four plus years ago, you would go and you'd meet face to face, shake the hands, and kind of build that relationship. And that's obviously not been possible for the past couple of years. So, I mean, what would you do if 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 you were starting over, didn't have this warehouse, and you're trying to make that good first impression and trying to make your case to uh, to a manufacturer for the first time. Yeah. So it's going to, it's harder, you know, but it's it's exactly how you and I started out and, you know, eventually we are going to be able to travel back to China. Um, but you know, in the meantime, you just have to try to plead your case as much as possible. And oftentimes with those manufacturers back in our early days, I would just have to continually come back to the conversation. So the conversation would, you know, kind of go dead for two or three weeks And then I would come back to it and say, hey, look, I just want to start talking. You know, I I just want to share again, like I'm going to be a great buyer from you. However, I need you to get to this price point. Right. Can you please ask your boss? Talk to your boss. Ask if you can go down a little bit, you know, for this first order. And uh, and you just got to kind of keep chipping away at that. And then eventually on a number of our products and with manufacturers, they will kind of go down to that level that you can afford to make the profit to go. Yeah. And I'll say this too. Last year, I, I believe earlier in 2022, we did a series, maybe two or three episodes of podcasts about uh, finding the right supplier and working with US manufacturers, which again, I think every year is becoming more and more of a potential opportunity. We work with some US manufacturers with some really good results for our products. There, the opportunities are still to obviously go meet face to face and to go this extra mile. And Andy, you actually just were telling our team the other day about, um, you know, it's 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 just taking that leap of faith or, or stepping out of your comfort zone. Uh, when you picked up the phone and called a manufacturer that we ended up working with, it was just kind of the getting over that initial hesitation to reach out to someone, right? So uh, it's the same way when we're talking about arbitrage building relationships with store managers as it is with uh, our suppliers. And so you guys were able to do that today by meeting with a representative in person. And you know we really don't know where that's going to take us. But who knows if this 
manufacturer turns into a long-term profitable relationship uh, through products in the future. So as entrepreneurs kind of keep getting uh, our feelers out there at all times uh, swinging um, and we won't, we won't connect every single time, but as long as we bat a, a pretty good average, hopefully we get more right than wrong. So, all right. So yeah, we're definitely going to be uh, updating on all things arbitrage, our brand in the future. Definitely excited to be building all kinds of stuff. We're heading, um, we're definitely a little bit at a, a calm before the storm during our busy peak season. So we're gearing up for that uh, and trying to set the foundation right. We'll keep bringing that back uh, each week here as possible on the show, let you guys know. And as we wrap up, I just want to let you know, um, for those who are looking at how to get into arbitrage, Andy, like you were talking about how to get the right, you know, where, how do I go to the right stores? What are my right buying criteria? I just want to say again, now's a great time to get into the Amazon seller tribe. You can go to amazingfreedom.com and sign up for the Amazon seller tribe. We have hundreds of people doing, um, arbitrage every single day, over $100 million sellers. And uh, Gary will be starting another coaching program here soon. It's a perfect time, the beginning of 2023, to get into selling on Amazon. Make sure you're doing it right. Join the Amazon Seller Tribe, get in there, understand, and then join the coaching when that comes up. There's no better opportunity. Uh, we can say that uh, wholeheartedly and backing it up ourselves by getting back into it in October to get into the uh, Amazon buying opportunity uh, there's nothing better out there. And then as we wrap up, if you're following, if you're watching this live, you can follow us our, on our social media accounts. They should be popping up on the screen right now. Give it a follow. We're going to be releasing more information and updates to our businesses throughout the year. You can follow us on social for that. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the next episode of the Amazing Freedom Podcast. See you.